Hello, welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm making soap number two in my gemstone series using these beautiful amber stones that I got from Soma Sundries. Sorry about the glare on the bag. They're just gorgeous. And so the fragrance that I chose to go with these stones is cinnamon and amber from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I really thought the name of the fragrance and the scent of it really goes with the color of those stones. It really inspired me. So let me read the scent description to you for the cinnamon and amber. It says cinnamon stick and clove bud blend smoothly with vanilla and amber. So kind of a simple description, but it's a really nice warm scent. So I haven't picked out my colors yet <laughs> to go with this fragrance and gemstone combination. But when I come back with my oils, I will have my colors picked and show you and tell you where those are all from when we get there. But right now, stones, scent, that's the inspiration. So I'm gonna go pick out my colors and we'll be right back to make some soap. Okay, we're back and it's soap additives time. And I took these beautiful stones back to my uh, mica racks there and I came up with a design just looking at these. So let me tell you about the colors before we get into all the additives and stuff. Um, the first thing is this uh, crimson red wine mica, which is gorgeous. Look at that color. And so I wanna do a pour of just this on the bottom. Then I'm gonna do a mica line with this beautiful blushed bronze mica, which is super extra shimmery. I'll do a mica line and then I'll do it in the pot swirl with this and a little titanium dioxide because this does have vanillin. I have the fragrance in here already. Um, we'll do an in the pot swirl on top before we top it off with those gorgeous stones. So like I said, the fragrance is in here, got great reviews. Boy, it smells good too. Let me just say that. <laughs> smells divine. So um, it's supposed to behave perfectly. So it's in there. So for the additives, I've got my colloidal oats, my kale and clay. And because this has a little bit of a cinnamon and clove scent to it, it made me think of foodie things. And so I'm gonna do my heavy cream powder and my buttermilk powder in here and that will be a beautiful creamy lather booster those just feel oh i love the way milks feel in a lather so let's get all the additives in i'll be adding two tablespoons of each of these dry ingredients into the pot Here is my lye solution, which has tussa silk fibers, cane sugar, and sodium lactate, as usual for me. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that's pretty much what I put in all my lye pots. And so I am going to um, just gently stir this, get it up to emulsion, and get the first layer in, and then I will blend the first layer really, really well so that it can set up a little bit before we um, go ahead in with the mica line and everything. So let's get this blended. And again, I'm just going for emulsion because the most of this is going to have to set while I get that first layer in and set up. So it's a little bit of a timing game.
It's the next day and I'm anxious to get in here and see how that layer and in the pot swirl came out. And wow, I miscounted the amount of stones I bought. So I threw some amethyst on here, but you know, I don't know if I'll keep those for family or have it listed in the shop. I haven't decided yet, but I figured I'd give them a stone anyway, but those carnelians look beautiful. I just love it. And this fragrance is so nice. I'm thinking about calling this soap um, carnelian spice because you can definitely pick up the spices in here and the warmth. So let's get in here and see what that inside looks like. With Olga, time to cut in here, and I am loving it. You can just pick up, I hope the camera's picking it up, a little bit of that glittery, bronzy mica there on the line. So tickled with that. Loving the swirls so far. So let's get in here. But first, I have to try to cut without hitting any stones. <laughs> These two end ones are going to be stinkers. I'm just barely... All right, let's give it a go. Oh, we made it. All right. I don't know why that's like totally stressful for me working around those stones. Oh, that's fun. That is very sort of rock looking, isn't it? Or stone looking. Is there a difference between a rock and a stone? That's a question. I have no idea. Gemstones though. Aren't those pretty? I had to Google and look up how to say carnelian because I wasn't sure, I didn't want to say it wrong. And you can see a little bit of that mica line in there. Oh my word, I'm so happy with these. And this is that red wine mica, um, which is just, it's not a true red, but it's a gorgeous red color in the red family. I love it. This was a fun batch to make. I like doing layers and in the pot swirl and mixing it up. It's so fun, you know, soap making is so creative and artistic and it's such a fun outlet. If you have never made soap, but you want to make soap, I encourage you to give it a try. It's kind of addicting though. Once you start, I'm gonna warn you, if you start making soap, it's hard to stop. <laughs> You'll end up with a ton of soap, which is awesome. So let's keep cutting, hopefully getting through without hitting any of these stones. This was a close one, see? All right, next loaf, and this has my amethysts on there. So this uh, to be announced or to be determined, I guess, whether or not I will list those in the shop or just keep them for family, I'm not sure. I do think they look pretty. Oh, look at that, I hit one. <laughs> okay, here, let's see if the soap is soft enough for me to mush it back. Oh my word, there like it never happened. Ooh, close call. All right. Now let's look at the swirls. Sorry, I got sidebarred there. Oh, happy, happy. What do you think of those amethysts? Hmm. By the time this video comes out, these will be all cured and ready to go in the shop. I wish I could ask you all real time. Do you think I should sell these or just keep them for friends and family? I think I might list them. I'm very happy with how these came out. So anyway, back to soap making addiction. <laughs> it really is. You get the soap bug. You, it's just kind of, once you, uh, those first couple of cold process batches, if you're a new soaper, are kind of scary and, or not scary, but, you know, intimidating and, you know, that learning and everything. But once you kind of get it down, the amount of creativity and the color options and the scent fragrance options or essential oil options. There's just so much to play with and additives that um, it is really fun and you'll find yourself just running with it. All right, last loaf here. And I love this blush bronze mica. It is so um, 
featherweight. How do I say? It's even lighter than some micas and it just plumes. So my whole table and studio was covered in glitter dust. <laughs> so um, just a word of warning if you get that mica. The color is amazing, but um, it's very light. And so it gets airborne really easy. And yeah, you will have a very sparkly environment if you use it. That's not a bad thing, right? A little sparkle in our life. It's not bad. Oh, I love it. This stone. Some of the stones, I love how different each one is. Um, that's really cool. You know, not all the stones are the same. They have different colors and shapes and I love it. Oh, this one's pretty. I think that the inside of the soap really represents these carnelian stones. I'm just really happy with how that turned out. And I love the side swirls too. Those are so fun. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This was soap number two in the gemstone series. And uh, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please hit that subscribe button and like if you like it. If you don't, it's okay to dislike too. It's up to you. But anyway, I thank you for taking the time to be with me today. And I do hope that you have a wonderful day. 